Hello, um, I'm going to try and give a very, very basic introduction to Kamen syndrome and hopefully maybe do a few more videos afterwards and try and give a bit more information as I go. I'm speaking as an informed patient point of view. I do have a bit of science background but I am just a patient. I talk to other patients with Kamen syndrome, I talk to specialists here in the United Kingdom and sometimes in the United States as well. So I try and get as much information as I can, up to date information, and then I try and tell people about Kamen syndrome. Because it's such a rare genetic disorder, uh, not many people have heard about it, and sometimes quite difficult to get a diagnosis because not all doctors have heard about it, and it's not the most obvious thing to think about. The major overriding symptom of Kalman syndrome is a failure to go through puberty or failure to start puberty by the age of 15. Now normally most, most individuals would have started puberty by 15. If not, they really should be referred to an endocrinologist, a doctor who specialises in hormones, to check there's no other problem. Now some people are just delayed. There is like an what used to call a constitutional delay of puberty and some people are just late starters but unfortunately at 15 there's a very small group with like Kalman syndrome patients who will never start puberty unless they get treatment and this is why sometimes you should get referred to a specialist so they can get a proper medical and hormonal review to make sure they do not, there's no underlying condition or reason why puberty hasn't started um, it used to be a lot of people I know went to the doctor at 15, 16 with no puberty and they got told, oh, you're just a late starter, go away for a couple of years, well, six months, a year, two years, and wait and see, you're just a late starter. But now this is thought to be quite negative advice. Really, by the age of 15, somebody, with ca somebody who has not started puberty, either a male with no signs at all, or a female who has not started menstruating by the age of 15, should be referred to a specialist for a full hormonal review. There's quite a lot of conditions that can cause a failure of puberty. Kalman syndrome is not, by far, not com by far the not most common, but that's why you need an expert review to try and eliminate all the other conditions before you can arrive at a diagnosis of Kalman syndrome. Uh, the incidence of Kalman syndrome is between 1 in 4,000 and 1 in 10,000, which uh, compares to uh, approximately 1 in 1,000 in something like Kleinfelter syndrome. Now, Kalman syndrome is a part of another group of conditions which goes by a very long name, which like, is very well, the name is hypogonadotropic hypogonadism usually just abbreviated to HH, which is far easier to say. Now HH does, the term HH really just means a failure to go through puberty. That means the ovaries or the testes do not function correctly because they have not got the correct signals from the brain. Now we're going to mention this a lot more later, but the problem in Kalman syndrome and HH lies within the brain, in the pituitary gland and the hypothalamus gland, and not with the testes and ovaries themselves. For a lot of people with Kalman syndrome and HH, the ovaries and testes are functional, but lay dormant because they have not got the correct signals from the brain. Now we'll mention this again in the future, but it's more of a pituitary condition or a hypothalamic condition, but there's, there's a lack of signals coming from the brain to tell the testes and ovaries to do their correct job and enter puberty at the right time. Now, Kalman syndrome is a subsection of HH, which also has the additional symptom of a lack of sense of smell. It's quite unique that way. You can get HH on its own with a normal sense of smell, or HH with no sense of smell. It's called Kalman syndrome. And sometimes people just use the word Kalman syndrome when they mean HH. It's just an easier word to say, and it just encompasses encompasses all HH conditions. There is quite a range of symptoms in HH. Which is another reason why you really should get a specialist review because there's no one condition. Kalman syndrome is quite specific but HH has a quite a range of symptoms and severity of symptoms so it's a little bit difficult to say which type of Kalman's or HH a person has without actually having a proper review. 
The treatments are all the same. It does not matter if you have Kalman syndrome or HH. The treatments are the same, the chances of fertility treatments are the same, but the different different people have have it for different reasons. There are different reasons which cause HH and different reasons for the cause of Kalman syndrome. Now, most people with Kalman syndrome do not recognise they've got it to the age of puberty. There are a small group, not very many, but there's a few people with Kalman syndrome also have other problems with their genitalia. They may have a slightly, might have mal malformed or ambiguous, geni ambiguous genitalia, which could point a doctor towards there being a problem early on. However, for most of us with Kalman syndrome and HH, most of us go through childhood quite happily until the age of 10, 12, 13 when there's the problem arises. Up to that point we have no idea there's going to be a problem. We may notice there's no sense of smell but that either gets ignored or overlooked because other people have no sense of smell and not many people will link a sense of smell to puberty. There is a reason which I may which I will mention later but it's probably more than enough for this video at the moment. The overriding symptom Kalman syndrome is delayed absent puberty and a no sense of smell. It can be treated, well, most of the symptoms can be treated, that without treatment, you can, a person with Kalman syndrome is very likely to be infertile, but there are fertility treatments available for both men and women. I could mention them later as well. It's a non, well, it's an, there's no, there's no um, morbidity or mortality risk related to Kalman syndrome. There's no pain associated with it, well, no physical pain associated with it. And there's no um, change in the uh, age of well. Uh, there's no there's no change in the um, expected death rate or the age of death. There's no problem with life expectancy. As the only major medical problem with Kalman syndrome is osteoporosis, which is softening or brittle bones because the bones aren't hard. The uh, testosterone and estrogen we are missing if we're untreated, causes the bones to harden, and without the testosterone or oestrogen, we're at risk of having soft or brittle bones. I'll mention this again in another video, because it's one of the most important bits of Kalman syndrome and HH, especially if untreated. But I think that's more than enough as a very basic introduction. I may, depends on the reviews, or if anybody ever listens to this, I may try and do a few more videos. Okay, bye-bye.